Stop. I said, stop. That's you, yes. You. The reader. I want you to stop. I want you to stop moving. I want you to stop breathing. See how long you can hold your breath. Are you doing it? Are you holding your breath? Can you feel the nagging feeling calling on you to open your mouth and inhale? Can you resist it? Do you see how unnatural it is? Breathing is what keeps you inside this world. It is something your body does without thought, without command. You have to force yourself to stop doing it, in fact, and it gets more and more difficult to do so. Your entire body screams at you. Open your mouth and inhale. Your mind reminding you again and again, pulling you like gravity down. Again and again. Until you can't think of anything else except taking that breath. Your own body and mind want you to suck in the air that will keep you where your mind and body want you to be. Where they think you should be. Can you resist them? What if they're wrong? That, my friend, is what it feels like. Feel an itch? Don't scratch it. It's an odd thing, isn't it? Here is a function of your body to tell you when there is something wrong. It will warn you when something has happened to your skin. It will tell you when insects are crawling within, ready to bite and spread their poisons into your body. It will tell you when your skin is infected and you rot while still alive. It can save you a thousand times over and warn you of danger a million more. And yet, it is so easily deceived. Most of the time, for nothing. Can you be certain that it will work when you need it? What if the insect has infected you so that you can't feel it? What if your eyes then deceive you as part of that poison so that you can't see, and it will continue inside of you. What if, what if it's happening right now? <laughs> Feel the itch yet? Such a fickle thing, isn't it? All I have to do is mention it, and chances are that you felt it. It's in your mind now, even if you haven't. I'll bet it's nagging at you, demanding your attention. Even if you know it's almost guaranteed that there's nothing there, that the odds of it being an insect in your skin are a million to one, your body still demands you to do it to be sure, because it is always better to be sure. That is what it feels like. 
Can you resist it? If not, I, I can't blame you. But then again, that would mean that you can't blame me for what I did either. Can you? Are you still holding your breath? <laughs> did you manage to resist the urge for this long? If you didn't, again, I can't blame you. You gave in to that constant, nagging feeling that you must do something. But if that is so, then you can't blame me for what I did either, or rather, what they say I did. If you are still holding your breath, let me ask you this. Are you conscious? Are you sure? If you were unconscious, would you know it? You may very well have passed out from lack of air. Your mind would shut you down. But would it let you know that you've shut down? It would tell you you were awake. It would make you dream, show you images, play you sounds that you can't tell from reality. Drowning men think they're on land. Unconscious boxers think they're still fighting. Men spend years in comas, minds telling them that they're in another place, in another time, and they have no way to tell the difference. So let me ask again, are you conscious? If you are certain that the answer is yes, let me ask you something else. Are you a fool? Or are you a liar? If you are a liar, who are you lying to? Me? Or yourself? You may breathe now if you have not already. If you are reading this article or hearing it, it means that it exists within whichever world your mind tells you you are in. If you suffocate your mind, this may no longer be true. Before it happened, I had a room to myself in an old apartment building. Everything in it was perfect. The walls were painted in a solid dark blue color. There was one window kept constantly shut and with the blinds closed. There were no paintings on the wall, they would only clutter it. To the immediate right of the door was a perfectly clean small fridge sink and stove which served as my kitchen. All the food arrayed in perfect lines in their proper order, so I always knew where they were. To the immediate left of the door was a perfectly straight line of shoes in front of a closet where my clothes were hung in the proper orders. There was a narrow bed in the far left corner, always properly made, and a nightstand with a dim lamp outside of it. The only light which I needed. In the right corner was a door that led to a simple but functional bathroom. Everything was perfectly organized, perfectly placed, and perfectly straightened. Even my own name, Gerald, was written above the door in perfect lettering. It was everything I needed. Every night, I would make sure it was perfect. I would check the fridge, seeing everything in its proper place. I would touch everything inside to see if I could feel them, and then I would close my eyes and do the same in case my eyes were lying and my hands believed them. I would check my clothes and my shoes lined up perfectly in the closet again, see them, touch them, then repeat the process with my eyes closed. If I could ensure that they were always in the exact right place, in the perfect straight lines each time, I could be certain that they were there. I would check everything the same way, my TV stand, my bathroom, my bed. The lock on my door must always be locked and the window must always be shut so that nothing can come in to disturb the perfection of my room. And I'd finish by going around the room, tapping on all the walls. Tap, 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 tap. 
I would make sure that my hands and ears always agreed with my eyes. My hands must stop where my eyes said the wall was. My ears must hear the tap, tap, tap. And then I would do it again with my eyes closed. I would turn off the light. I would turn it on again, lest it light up a different room than the one I was in before. I would check everything again, again tapping. And if they were all the same, I could sleep. After this, I couldn't touch anything but the bed, because if I turned on the light, it may create a different room. And I would have to check again. If I knocked something over, it may not land where it was supposed to, and I would have to check to see that it was where my eyes told me it was. And if I kept going, I could never stop. There were times when I would spend days on end going over everything again and again and again and again. Each time something new would happen, something would change, and I would have to start over. Some people told me that I had a problem. They took me to a doctor, and he tried to get me to stop. But how could I? It was like breathing. I didn't do it because I wanted to. I did it because I had to. If I didn't think of it, my body would do it on its own. I'd have to order it not to. And if I tried to order it to stop, then the feeling would grow inside until I simply had to do it. Nothing else could get done. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't even breathe. Unless I knew the room was real. Or it was like the itch. It was nagging me, telling me something was wrong. I may be almost certain the room was there, but could I ever be completely certain? Even if it was a billion to one that the room existed, did it not make sense to check just one more? To make the odds a billion and one to one. Does not the horror of having been deceived by your own senses outweigh the moments it takes to tap, tap, tap on the wall? So you see, I had no choice but to continue doing it, as you now have no choice but to breathe or to feel an itch. If I could check, then I could be that much more sure that everything was there and I could rest. Everything was perfect. Everything was in its right place. Until it came in. It had to come wreck my perfect existence. It began with a noise. It came down the hall one day to the room beside mine. It let out ceaseless whining sounds that were so high that I was sure that it would make my ears bleed. It sounded like a broken trumpet some fool still tried to play thinking that he was making music. The sound was awful, grating, burning into my ears and wrecking my concentration. How? How could I possibly properly survey my room with that unending drone? It was disgusting. It was a massive, soft thing that moved slowly and in a swaying fashion. It had a brown, moss-like mass of hair growing around its head that hung down its body in a mangled mess. It was covered with spots and constantly stunk of sweat. And what's more is that it mocked me, oh yes. It disagreed with my ways and tried to change my reality when I wasn't looking. It would come into my room to... to move things. It would take them out of order. It would put them in the wrong place. It claimed that it didn't touch them, but I knew that it was lying. Just imagine. All the work I had done, all the effort I had made to keep everything real, and it could ruin it in seconds. I would try to force it out, but it was bigger than me and I couldn't budge it. 
Finally, it would leave, and I would lock the door, checking again and again to ensure it was locked no fewer than 50 times would I turn the lock to make sure that that thing wouldn't come back in again, but somehow it always did. But it didn't stop there. Even when it was outside my room, it could still influence it. I tried to sleep. I checked all the objects in my room, all the clothes, all the food, all the furniture, the lock, the window, my bed, all the walls, and every fucking thing else. And I went to sleep. But then it started again with its noise, the same droning, whining, irritating sound that was constantly emitted from it came into my room, that noise it used to mock me, to laugh at me as it ruined everything I did. <laughs> it woke me up, and I knew that it had changed something. But what was more was that it was too close. I knew how big my room was. I knew how big its room was. There was no way that the sound could have been coming from where I heard it. Something was wrong. I checked everything again, going over everything twice. Four times. Five. Just like all the others, it wasn't my choice. I didn't want to check. I had to check. My mind and body made me. I ensured everything was there and I slept again and then the sound came again. I checked everything over a dozen times. I didn't want to check. I had to check. My mind and my body made me. I ensured everything was there and I slept again. And then the sound came again. I checked everything was there and I slept Again, it came, and again, I checked everything, thirty times, and... And... And something changed. Something changed. I, I went around the room, tapping the walls. Tap, 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 tap. I heard... I hit... <laughs> I hit every wall where I should have, where my eyes told me they were, and then to check again, I closed my eyes and reached forward and hit... Nothing. My hand, it, it went straight through where the wall should have been, where my eyes had told me it was. I opened my eyes, I reached out again, I tapped the wall, I closed them, reached out, and hit nothing. I tried again. I didn't want to. I wanted to go back to the calm and quiet world I had lived in, where everything was certain. But I couldn't now. It wasn't my choice any more than it is your choice to breathe, my friend. I closed my eyes, reached out, and hit nothing. I stood staring for what seemed like hours, trying to understand what had just happened in a hundred million trials. Never had my eyes and my hands disagreed with each other, but now, on the hundred million and first trial, they were wrong. I mean, I suppose even a one in a million chance will occur eventually, and I suppose I had hit that number. The wall was there, and it wasn't. Eyes open, it was there. Eyes closed, it was not. But the sound, the sound was right behind the wall when my eyes were open. It was too close. It didn't make sense with what my eyes told me. When my eyes were closed, the wall wasn't there, and the sound made sense, perhaps. Perhaps this is how it entered my room. So the sound existed, but it was changing my reality. It had interfered with my room and forced me to check everything again and again and again and again. I closed my eyes, and I reached through the wall, or more, I reached through where I had once thought the wall to be. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to say no, but my mind would not let me. My mind wanted me to reach forward, like it once wanted me to breathe or to itch. And I obeyed. I found the source of the noise behind where the wall used to be, if it had ever existed. I had found it. The thing that produced the relentless, irritating sound which forced me to check everything again and again, and then mocked my efforts. I had to stop the noise. I couldn't not stop it. 
Even if I resisted, my body kept commanding that I do so, and I gave in. Like you gave in to the need to breathe or to itch, I gave in to the need to stop the noise. Oh, I knew what I was doing. I knew full well what would happen. I knew that the world I had lived in had told me it was wrong to kill. But now I knew that that world was wrong. Maybe it would die. But who's to say if this one insignificant thing even existed? I grabbed hold of the source of the noise. It was soft and I realized I could easily break it and stop it from producing the irritating whine. My mind told me to squeeze and I squeezed. <laughs> It struggled against me, but it was futile. Its reality was not mine, and I had control over my world. It was my reality, and I was all-powerful. It could not resist me. I squeeze. <laughs> With all my might, I squeezed and I squeezed until I heard a crack. And soon the noise stopped and let me be. I backed away and opened my eyes, restoring the wall to where it was before. I went to sleep, finally able to rest, safely knowing the truth of my existence. This is when the other world ceased to be. That fake world, that lie that my eyes told me, was no longer there. I no longer needed to check everything, to tap things to see if they were real. I knew they weren't. I had found the truth. The old world has stopped. The old time has stopped. And now, now that the old world is gone, now that it has stopped, now, because its time no longer affects me. I am in the real world. I am no longer deceived. Now I am out of my room. Now I am gone. Now I am in the real world. Now I do as I please, change what I want, and do not have to worry over the reality of my own existence. Every so often, I'm forced out of my world. People force me back. Back to the then. Back to the old time. To the old fake world. They give me pills which deceive the senses. They talk to me and they tell me things which are lies. And then I am in their world again with their time and their lies. A fake world where I once lived in my own room and then... And a room they put me in with padded walls and chains in that time where I was called a madman, a criminal in that time. But now, how could I be a criminal? It never really existed anyway. It was simply a figment of my imagination which I chose to end. And when they would force me into that world, I would be deceived only for a moment. All I would need to do is shut my eyes and reach forward towards the wall, and when I feel nothing, I know for certain the wall is not there. And I return to my own reality, here. Here, where I know that the world they want me to be in does not exist. <laughs> they are insane, and they have forced me to take pills which make me insane as well. The pills deceived my eyes for a moment. But I was too strong for them, and if they try it again, I'll simply gouge them out. Those lying orbs which tried to deceive me into thinking that my world is fake and theirs is real, and now I no longer have to worry about that world. Maybe they lived there, but I live only in my own. My eyes can no longer deceive me. My ears can no longer hear lies. They are there to deceive me, but I know better. I know 
what is fake and what is not. I know what is truth. I know what is real. And my world is real.